Can a different frothing pitcher produce a better milk froth? Hey latte lovers, Mark here from HolateLove.com. Today a look at the Espro Toroid 2 frothing pitcher. Its unique design features a patent pending shape with a curved wall and unique dimple in the base to encourage milk rotation when steaming and frothing. To evaluate its performance, I'll give you an up close look at frothing with the Espro Toroid side by side against a Rattleware Latte Art Pitcher. And you'll see how it performs using auto frothing and manual steam wands. We'll get to the test in the moment, but if you're new to frothing, be sure and use the links up here to check out some of our most popular frothing videos, and I mean really popular with about two million views between them, including milk frothing for beginners, six common milk frothing mistakes, and how to froth for latte art. So on to the tests. First up is an auto frothing wand on a Gaja Classic. It's a bit of a challenge to produce a super fine microphone with an auto frothing wand. They do require less skill to use, but you will give up some control of the frothing process. So what I hope to find out is if the toroid shape helps the milk roll more to create a finer microphone with a sweeter and creamier mouthfeel in a finished latte. As we go through the test, I'll have some tips for getting better results from an auto frothing wand. Okay, so first tips. With your machine up to steaming temperature, purge your wand of any residual water before steaming and use cold milk from the fridge. I'm using six ounces of whole milk in each pitcher. With the tip just below the surface of the milk, turn the steam on. Now, right away, I notice a more vigorous roll in the toroid pitcher. With the toroid, you want to point the tip straight at the dimple on the bottom. I'll continue with this tip position until I feel the outside of the pitcher beginning to warm. Then lower the wand deeper to reduce the amount of air added. Going even deeper with the wand, the air intake holes are covered, which stops air injection completely. From here, it's finding a tip position that rolls the milk as much as possible. In the Rattleware pitcher, it's angled down to a corner. In the toroid, again, it's straight at the dimple in the bottom. As the milk expands, it's a little difficult to see the rolling action. The larger bubbles, which are characteristic of auto-frothing wands, are more concentrated on the smaller surface area of the toroid, hiding what's going on beneath the surface. I suspect the toroid's pitcher's bottom dimple is distributing the roll more evenly through the milk. In the Rattleware, it appears to be more focused in one area. After steaming, wipe down the wand and purge again to expel any residual milk. Now give the pitcher some taps and swirls to help break any larger bubbles and mix to a uniform consistency. A good froth has a nice shine and looks like latex paint in a can. Now both look fairly good with the toroid just a hair shinier which may indicate a slightly finer microphone. Now I won't be doing any latte art here but as I pour you can get an idea of the milk froth consistency. No glaring differences and both froths do have a few slightly larger bubbles. So I tasted both lattes off camera and they were close. The Rattleware pitcher may be slightly milkier and the latte poured from the toroid, a hair creamier in mouthfeel and a little richer in flavor. Moving on to the manual steaming, I'm using a Profitech Pro 500 heat exchange machine. Same drill with purging the wand prior to steaming. Again, I'm using six ounces of milk in each pitcher. The Pro 500 has a lot more steam power than the Gaja Classic. What I notice in the toroid pitcher is a more uniform roll. For tip position, it's the same as with the auto frothing wands and angle to the corner in the Rattleware and straight down at the dimple in the Espro toroid pitcher. I'm ripping in small amounts of air until the outside of the pitcher warms and then sinking the wand a little deeper to continue heating and rolling. Here again, the toroid appears to have a more vigorous and uniform roll. After completion, I'll wipe and purge the wand again and give some knocks and swirls. Compared to the auto frothing wand, no large surface bubbles. Visually, the surface of the toroid pitcher looks just a little shinier. Moving on to pouring, the milk from the toroid seems to have a slightly finer quality. I'm, again, not pouring art, but the milk from the toroid looks as though it would be more capable of doing so. Tasting the drinks, once again, a slight difference with the edge to the toroid pitcher for mouthfeel. So in the end, only a slight difference, and I can't say it's really totally due to the frothing pitchers. Maybe my technique was just a little better using the Espro pitcher. Is the Tory pitcher worth the extra cost? Well, maybe. 
Subjectively, it produced a slightly creamier mouthfeel. On top of that, it's got an eye-catching look with an etched logo, stamped in measuring lines, and a highly polished glossy finish. The Espro Toroid 2 Pitcher comes in 12 and 20 ounce sizes, and they're available now from Holatelove.com. I'm Mark. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the good stuff on Everything Coffee. Hey, why not subscribe now for easy free access to more videos on Everything Coffee brought to you by Holatelove.com. Oh.